It's time that the reign of criminals who are destroying our city, it is time for it to come to an end. Stats mean nothing in terms of your feelings. Governor Gavin Newsom and San Francisco Mayor London Breed are two of the biggest voices to get tough on crime to curb fears here in San Francisco. Breed made national headlines when she declared a state of emergency in the Tenderloin neighborhood last December. But we're not a city where anything goes. Our compassion should not be mistaken for weakness or indifference. And while San Francisco has the reputation of being one of the most progressive cities in the country, is that reputation a reality? The answer is mixed according to San Francisco political historian and author, Lincoln Mitchell. Today, by most measures, San Francisco is one of the most progressive cities in the country. But it is not a radical city, right? At least in terms of its governance, right? London Breed is a centrist Democrat. She's a Dianne Feinstein Democrat, as was Ed Lee, as was Gavin Newsom, as was Willie Brown and Frank Jordan. The only exception recently was, was Art Agnos, and that goes back to the late 80s. But it is... You know, when I, when I describe San Francisco politically to my friends who aren't from here, I say it's a Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi town. It's not a Bernie Sanders AOC town. When you look at a lot of the issues that are the controversial ones in San Francisco, there's a real divide and there's definitely folks who are much more aligned with corporate interests. The San Francisco Chronicle used an algorithm to compare the city's supervisors political ideology. The algorithm scored each supervisor based on how they voted on past legislation. Most of the supervisors are viewed as progressive, with Dean Preston scoring as the most progressive. The second most moderate supervisor, according to the algorithm, is Asha Safai. Safai describes himself as a pragmatic progressive because of his record of working in the labor movement for almost a decade. He has been one of the loudest voices saying that there is a surge in retail theft, but data from SFPD shows larceny was down 26% in 2021 compared to 2019. Overall, property crime was down in San Francisco 14% during those same years. Now, if you spread the information out overall in terms of volume, you probably you might be able to create a statistical, uh, you know, narrative that says, actually, look at our numbers today versus 2018. But there's the brazenness of it is what's different today. Safai led the passing of legislation allowing San Francisco sheriffs to work as security guards in stores when they're off duty. So maybe if you add it all up, maybe the numbers are less. But I know that if you talk to any San Franciscan today, they will tell you that this is a major concern. While the California Retailers Association told the Mercury News it estimated businesses lose around $3.6 billion, or 25% of all sales, to organize retail crime each year, just in San Francisco and Oakland, the National Retail Federation gave its own estimate that retail theft makes up only seven cents of losses for every $100 of sales. Last fall, Walgreens announced it was closing five stores due to, quote, organized theft. And I think that the culture of leniency, you know, there's a laissez-faire attitude that we've had. Safai backed up Walgreens' reasoning, but data from SFPD does not. The five stores that closed reported fewer than two shoplifting incidents a month on average since 2018. I've tried to move the conversation away from Walgreens. I think it's very obvious that Walgreens was already in conversation for reducing their footprint. I think some of this absolutely uh, was accelerated by this behavior, um, but you're right. I mean, we've asked them to share their numbers and they've said that, you know, this is one of the epicenters in the country, but definitely this can be somewhat of a self-perpetuating uh, conversation for sure. What people's feelings are their realities. I'm afraid, I'm nervous, I'm happy, whatever it is, but people's feelings don't arise out of nowhere, right? They, people feel a certain way because the media is giving them information that makes them feel a certain way because politicians are giving them information that makes them feel a certain way. And because there's no frame of reference. I mean, I can't tell you how many discussions I've had here with people who said crime is out of control and I try to talk them through the data and they don't want to hear it. Overall, crime has been going down in San Francisco since the 90s. But that didn't stop 80% of San Franciscans polled by the Chamber of Commerce
from believing crime has gotten worse. Those fears led Governor Newsom to propose $300 million to combat retail crime, even with him noting retail crime has been going down since 2014. If crime's gone up, there are calls for more police to address crime. If crime's going down, that's proof that police are working and we need more police. So you never have a situation in which anyone is saying, um, maybe the solution isn't just putting more and more police out there, but it's getting at the underlying causes of crime. In 2021, overall crime was down 15% in San Francisco compared to 2019, while violent crime dropped 20% in that same period. The city did see 15 more homicides in 2021 than 2019. You can never report man murdered in Richmond district despite crime being lower than it was five years ago. No one wants that story, right? 